Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Petricor. Uh, this episode we're going to be making some tiny tweaks to the Southern Winds uh, in order to let them stand a slightly better chance in the game. Uh, we're employing two variants this game. First of all, the one more turn variant chosen because it's incredibly simple to implement. Uh, after we pass, the Southern Winds get to play one more card. Simple enough. In addition, uh, the No More Tricks variant is sort of active here. Uh, the book suggests, hey, maybe you want to not play with the wheat and potato, because the, uh, the AI opponent doesn't understand how they work, and is just going to give you a bunch of free points, which is absolutely something that happened last game. Uh, I did not intentionally take the wheat and potato out of the uh, tile stack, but neither one of them came up, so we're sort of accidentally using this variant at the same time. Is that an overcorrection? Am I now going to lose by 50 points? I don't know. Let's go find out. So one thing I realized I didn't actually clarify during the last video uh, is that we are not playing with the Flowers expansion because there is no solo content in the Flowers expansion. It's entirely uh, a thing about interactivity and multiplayer. None of the components work with solo play. So we're skipping right through that and on to the honeybees. On to this little monster. Look at him. Ugh, just absolutely terrifying. So the honeybee has brought with him a couple of honey-producing plants. You can see we have a watermelon field and a blueberry field. Uh, these plants sometimes produce honey, which is what this uh, is telling us. And in addition, they require pollen to, uh, to grow in order to become scorable. So you can see there's pollen that's been distributed over the, uh, over the fields here. We need to collect the pollen germinate it, and then distribute it onto the watermelon and the blueberry in order for them to be scorable. Uh, in addition to that stuff, there is the honey. Honey, just like in real life, is a small yellow hexagon. I assume, listen, I don't know from bees, man. Um, but the value of honey is that, a little bit like the wheat tile, the player with the honey, the player with the most honey at the end of the game, is going to score some points. This is not an amount of points that can just be ignored, right? Ten, 10 is a serious value. And unfortunately, due to the way things dealt out randomly during setup, uh, the Southern Winds get to start with three honey, while we only get two. So I'm a little concerned. We're going to be playing from behind on that one for the entirety of the game. Also, the plants just kind of dealt out weird this game, and there's, there's two coffees. There's this rice plant over here that is not worth any points at all unless... It sprouts and then gets rained on, at which point it is worth one point per droplet on it. So that's going to be a little bit different. Uh, and let's talk about what this bee actually does. So in place of our second action, instead of discarding two cards of a suit to take a second action, we may discard any one card to move the bee around. And we can spend honey to move the bee um, to non-adjacent tiles. Uh, after moving the bee, you must perform one of the bee actions. Uh, this is how we collect pollen. Uh, we can also uh, use the bee to place our water drops and, and on top of that place germinated pollen. And also we can just use the bee to collect honey from the two honey collecting tiles, even if they're not, uh, even if we're not doing a harvest. You can just get us a little bit of honey. Uh, I don't know exactly how hard it's going to be to stay ahead of blue on the honey. I did. I have not played a game with these mechanics in place. We're just, we're gonna do it live. So let's get to, so let's get to the doing it live part. Also, you might notice 11 Southern Winds card. There are a couple of new Southern Winds cards that came with the expansion. I don't know what they do. We'll find out when we draw them. All right, that's a pretty straightforward start. So one vote sun. And I've already forgotten all of the iconography. Add a neutral drop to the cloud on the selected tile. Oh, I didn't even finish set. I didn't finish setting up. Sorry. Uh, at the beginning of the game, the southern winds get to start with a couple of clouds out. I forgot. My bad. Okay, that was that was a pretty goofy looking roll. But listen, it's all. The random number generator says one. It doesn't matter what the random number generation looked like. Okay, so now we roll for this for this thing. All right, so cloud one receives a drop and also decrement. Ah, you get to set one of the harvest dice to the harvest face right away. It's a pretty strong start. Okay. 
Now it is our turn. What are we going to do here? So we know how coffee works. We know how cotton works. We're pretty familiar with these things. Let me actually read the rules for blueberry and watermelon on camera. I did read them before, but I've already forgotten how they work. Okay. The blueberry requires two drops and one germinated pollen token. The tile scores five victory points and three honey for the player with the most drops. Okay, yeah, that's, the payout is... The payout includes some number of honey. So that's pretty straightforward. It just needs a germinated pollen. Uh, the... The iconography on the watermelon's a little bit less clear. Requires four drops to develop. Okay, so it doesn't require germinated pollen to develop, but you score based on the amount of germinated pollen on it. So if there isn't any, it's it's worth a maximum of zero points. So four times the number of germinated pollen for the player with the most drops. Okay. I guess that makes sense. It's a little hard for my for my math brain to look at this and read it as four times pollen when it sure looks like four divided by pollen. But I get what they're, they're doing. It's four per pollen. I get the, I get what they're going for. All right. Well, I have no strategy at all. I have no plan. Uh, it looks like two of the dice are showing the harvest face, but the other die has four pips on it. So honestly, we're not that close to a harvest. We could try to push for a really early one, maybe. If we were going to push for an early harvest, how would we best take advantage of that? Probably just drop some stuff on the cotton, right? I'm going to I'm going to frost. Let's open with a frost. Develop ourselves a uh, a cloud and some some drop here. And then the B actions are all about collecting pollen. Spend one or two pollen to place one drop per pollen on the bee's tile. That does seem like a really useful thing. But I think I'm just going to play Sun. Well, sorry, we should we should vote. Um, you know what? I'm going to do this, then we're going to play Sun, and I'm going to Sun vote again. I think this is how I opened the last game, and it works so well there. How could it possibly be a bad idea? Uh, so let's just go ahead and place that vote before I forget. We're just going to do the standard place a cloud and then get three drops into it sequence. Again, it's been working so well so far. All right, Southern Winds, what do you got? You got uh, a cloud with mixed drops moves. There is, there is no such cloud. And then vote to, uh, vote to Wind. If Sun and Wind happened, what would that do for us? Well, if we can get one more drop into this cloud and try to force a harvest... I mean, we're not going to be able to force a harvest this turn. We might be able to make one happen next turn. Maybe. So what do we want to do in the interim? I mean, I sort of do want to force this cloud up into, into the Thunder State. I'm just thinking it'd be nice to get a tile into scoring position immediately, and it's a pretty good tile. Although, if if the Southern Winds end up doubling this off of Sun and drop, like, you know, the rice could end up being worth a lot for them. I'm a little nervous about that. I kind of want to, I kind of want to score the blueberry. If we can. So it's only going to need one germinated pollen. Interesting. If you don't spend honey, you must move the bee. But if you spend honey, you can leave it in place. Okay, well, let's, um... I sort of want to play... I'm going to play Sun again. We're just going to... We're going to commit real hard on this cotton. We're going to make this cotton happen. And we're going to vote Sun again, just to try to secure this a little bit. And then we're going to take a B action. So I'm going to discard... I'm going to discard this other Sun, right? It's discard one card, move the B to an adjacent tile. Let's move the B down to here. 
And then I want to collect the pollen, I think, so that we are able to take that middle action. So give me this. All right, when we collect it, it's dormant. And when we, when we place it back on the tile, it is germinated. Okay, so yeah, probably my, my plan is to just move the bee back to the blueberries next turn, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's good. So we don't get a vote for that action. Right? Let me, hold on. Let's verify that. Let's make sure that I know what the heck I'm talking about. Because it's entirely possible that I do not. So as their second action, a player may take one of the following options. This replaces the normal second action of discarding two matching cards to perform that action and vote. Okay, yeah, so we are replacing the action and the voting. No vote for me. All right, then I guess it is the Southern Winds' draw. The Southern Winds would like to move a... Okay, they actually do have legal targets here, so let's roll to see which one they hit. It's this one. It moves to the southeast. Down here to the coffee. And then they vote wind again. Seems pretty likely that that is going their way. So I think, like I said, I think I, think I know what we want to do. Do I want to... I probably want to frost and then be, right? Not wind and then be. Yeah. Let's frost. Uh, we will... I mean, I, I should probably build a cloud here, right? I think that makes sense. Let's place a cloud on the blueberry. Put a drop in the cloud, and then I'm gonna... Instead of voting, I'm gonna reduce the value on this harvest die. I'm gonna try to push us into an earlier harvest this game. And then B action. I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna discard this guy to move the B to here. And spend one or two pollen to place one drop for each. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna place a germinated pollen. It's getting to be the case. There's a, kind of a lot of stuff on the tiles, and also a drop. I did it, everyone. And that's it. So now, if we could get this to rain through, this tile could be this tile could grow. We could we could get paid out like soon. Unfortunately, the way you would really want to do that is like frost followed by rain, and we are doing neither of those effects. Whatever, it's fine. All right, Southern Winds. The reshuffle. Man, I really like... Gosh, the art. Also, I just want to note that uh, when I started recording that first episode, it was not raining here, and it had not rained here in a while. Uh, now it is raining, and it smells lovely outside. Coincidence? No, obviously the board game is magic. Alright, place one drop on a cloud. Just any cloud. Okay. Which cloud? The cloud on tile four, obviously. That one. And then vote sun twice. So that sucks. Well. Well, shoot. And we can't even fix that by playing this. I'm gonna pass. So, pass, discard your hand, and because we're playing the variant we're playing, Southern Winds gets another- oh god. Oh, look at the complexity of this card! <laughs> what in the hell does this say? It's card number 11. I mean, about half of it was just pictures of bees, so it's, pro it's probably not as complicated as it, as it looks. Uh, here we go. When drawn, the new solo, solo cards have the following actions. If the neutral player has no drops left, advance them by points. Okay, now move the B to the highest numbered tile where it is currently not currently present that either the neutral player does not have a drop majority on or where the neutral player has a majority but the tile is not yet sprouting. I mean, that's going to be here. Player does not have a majority and this is the highest numbered tile. Okay, and do what? Once we're there, remove all dormant pollen. If the tile is a honey-producing tile and not already at the germinated pollen limit, place a germinated pollen token. And then place two drops from the neutral player's supply directly onto the tile. 
Okay, and then there's and then there's more, and then there's even more words. So it loses its non-germinated pollen, gains a germinated pollen, gets two drops. That's a pretty powerful card. And then how do I read this voting? Uh, this card decreases one harvest die and places a vote on the weather with the fewest votes. If tied, choose clockwise from frost. Well, frost it is. And that gets decreased, and you get... Oh, wait. Did I do these wrong? I took the two points, right? I, I think so. Whatever. I, I'm pretty sure I did those backwards, and if I didn't, then we're... It's, no, 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 I totally didn't. This was right, and then you get a point for decreasing the thing. That's right, because it the first card we drew for him decreased the thing to harvest, and then I went, took the other thing from four to three. I remembered eventually, you know, we got there. Okay, and then it is the end of the action phase, and now, weather resolution. So, sun. We know how this works now. Uh, you get one of these, and you get... A whole bunch of these and then uh, that's a vote win for you it's looking pretty no sorry it's a vote win for nobody that one is tied the other one is a vote win for you uh, I gotta double my count somewhere I mean it feels pretty bad to go five additional but also Adding a drop here doesn't really do anything for us. We're already going to be at a successful value. I guess a drop here is a little bit of insurance. We're probably not in any danger of losing dominance on the other tile. Doubling the drops here would force a, a rain through immediately, but I think we can probably just make that happen by making the rain weather happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust in that. Okay, then we resolve the wind. So. I get to move a disc from one tile to another, and, and actually there's only one disc on an, on a tile, right? And I guess there's these. Hmm. Do I have to move any one drop from a field to an adjacent field? It probably is mandatory. A lot of stuff in this game is mandatory. But let's verify. Wind weather. Starting from the player to the right of the first player, uh, must choose a drop on any of the tiles and move it orthogonally adjacent. Okay. Required. Well. Let's see, we could, we could try to fertilize that. I suppose the smart move would be for me to take this, if we think we're going to do a rain through here already, the smart move would probably be for me to take this and move it, oh wait, but after I do my move, any of our tiles that aren't in the, or any of our discs that aren't in the top row are going to get moved up, right? So actually, if I move this down, it just gets moved back. And that doesn't help anybody. And this thing, like, I don't think it really helps to spread these out. I mean, I guess this doesn't hurt. Because it's already the case that this is going to be scorable. And it makes it less likely that they will get to score the watermelon. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Okay, uh, and then that is, in fact, a vote win for blue. This game is certainly starting out a little bit differently. All right, and then uh, harvest phase doesn't happen. Go to the cleanup step. Give me some cards. All right, let's try to try to salvage this a little bit. <laughs> this opening situation looks pretty bad for us. So we at least have all four suits represented in our hand this time. So what, what is the thing that we would like to happen in terms of weather at the end of this turn? I would like it if we got rain, and if this was a, a rain cloud when that happened, or a thundercloud. So I guess we could try to vote frost to try to force this into a thundercloud, or we could just play sun on this a single time. If we do play Sun, I'm not wild about what that does to our voting. Like, we don't get to vote any of the useful things. I mean, I guess, what am I doing? It's not my turn. The Southern Wind gets to open. 
All right, we know that one. That one is just place some drops on tile three. I think we're going to see some coffee scoring, which I do not like. And that is two votes for rain. So that pretty much guarantees that rain will happen. All right, how are we going to cope with this? The AI is coming out um, much more aggressive this game. Very, very aggressive. How about... We should try to get at least one disc onto this coffee. The odds of us, um, the odds of us taking first place are basically zero. But we can get second place, and if we can prevent the sun weather effect from happening, we can make it so that the differential between first and second place is only two points. I think that's got to be that's got to be our strategy for mitigating the loss here. So we want. I mean, basically just not sun. We want rain and not sun. Wind would be fine. Wind might even be good. But I don't actually want to play wind. Right, so here's what we'll do. We'll start off this one by playing sun. For our first action. We will sun this thing to turn it into a rain cloud. Or a thundercloud, rather. And then we will, um... We will place our vote on wind from the sun card. Then, I don't think that we necessarily need to move the bee. It might be good for us to do frost instead or something like that. And I kind of think, um, with this one we want to just pull harvest. We want to lower the harvest counter. Try to force a turn to harvest. I mean, it's certainly dangerous, though. How are we going to ensure that we get this covered? I, I am doing the frost thing. Let me let me discard the. Yeah, yeah. We discard the frosts. We are doing this thing. So we're gonna place a cloud, probably over the watermelon. Let me. Move that droplet over so that it's not under the cloud. Yeah. And then we could vote Frost. But I'm going to do this thing. And hopefully we haven't just fed Blue the two points. Only two of the cards in this deck have the Harvest symbol on them, so fingers crossed. And I think it is, in fact, time to draw. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, I believe that one gives two honey. That seems bad for us. It's the same card as last time, right? Except the last phase is, yeah, they get two honey. Okay, well, at least they don't place a vote. So, uh, here's your honey. It's not a great start for us. And then, also, the bee moves to the... Highest numbered tile... Hold on, let's see this again. Highest number where it is not currently present, where the neutral player does not have a majority of drops. So that's just going to be tile 10. And on tile 10, we place two drops and we germinate the thing, right? Move all the dormant pollen tokens, place a germinated token... Oh, sorry, if it's a do if it's a honey tile. Because, right, germinated tokens don't mean anything on other tiles. So it just loses its pollen token. And then two drops for you. This does seem like a really efficient way of moving your drops around. Just throw this in the bag. Of getting your drops kind of spread all over the place. I mean, as long as rain happens, this is not super relevant. All, all that did was give them one point. I think we can deal with that. All right, so now it's on me. And I think what we want to do here is play wind. We'll move this cloud into this space. So that gets me in on the scoring. And I'm going to vote wind 
because if I vote rain, like we could vote rain and try to take over the rain space, but if we vote rain, then the um, the southern winds drawing the double sun vote card means that the sun weather happens, and we really don't want it to. I don't want um, I don't want this cloud to to turn. It still could be a problem if they draw the double frost card, but you know we can only prevent so many things here. And then. I suppose another option we have is that we could play wind now and move this cloud. You can move any cloud that you are in. Yeah. So we could move this cloud over to the watermelon. Where it will score only... F they'll score four points and we'll score... It's not actually different. It's the same differential. Yeah, I guess that doesn't matter. As long as the, um, as long as the sun doesn't, doesn't warm up the coffee, we're fine. So, man, what do we want to do second? I guess we could, um, we could have the bee get us some more pollen. Oh, no, I want to, I want to do an action that lets me vote, because I want to pull the last point off the harvest die, don't I? Uh, so, we have four cards in hand, we could do literally anything. What makes the most sense? Rain doesn't seem terribly significant. All the clouds we're in are already going to rain out. Uh, wind lets us move a cloud, but I don't want to move a cloud, I think. Sun doesn't really do much for us. I guess frost? Just, just make another cloud to play with? Yeah, okay, I think that makes sense. So here's one frost, and here is a second frost. There you go, two frost cards for to take the frost action. And I guess here? I think this makes the most sense. This won't rain through, so this coffee's not scorable. I think, I think this harvest is going to be okay for us do that and we will instead of voting do this thing I get two points hooray and now you get an action and please don't screw this up with your votes uh, okay it's not necessarily the end of the world and actually the harvest this is a good time for a harvest symbol to come up so place one place one drop into the cloud on six Oh yeah, see it did that? That's the same thing that happened in the last game. There's an error in the scripting logic that is causing that to uh, to make a thundercloud when it should not. Alright, one vote on sun is not the end of the world. Let me make sure of something. When they want to take a point of harvest, but there are no points of harvest to take, does anything happen? Uh, where is, where even is that part? Here we go. Uh, perform the card's ability. If there are no valid targets, oh, if there are no valid targets, they're supposed to get a point. A single point. It would not have changed the outcome of last game. Um, if a harvest icon is shown, is there, there's at least one die showing a non-harvest icon, then do the thing. Uh, okay, so it doesn't get any points for failing to be able to process a harvest icon, but it should have gotten some, yeah, you know, it should have had like probably three points maybe last game. I can't remember if, has that happened this game? I don't think so. I think it's always had stuff to do. Anyway, uh, so it's done then. And now I pass, and then one more Southern Wind's turn. Could be anything. Okay, it was not a sun vote. Hooray. So you get this, and also you get to place a droplet on tile 4. Which doesn't matter, because you were already scoring tile 4 all the way out anyway. Cool, that's actually totally fine. Alright, so that's the end of the action phase. Now we move on to weather time, where it is wind and then rain. 
Uh, wind is a one vote for me. And then... The weather effect is I must move any one dro drop from a field to an adjacent field, and then um, our drops would move upward, but we have... The only drop we have on the table is already on a top row tile. So... Uh, where does it matter? Where does it matter that we move a drop? I guess moving this to here is smart. Because this tile's going to score out and all the water drops are going to get removed from it anyway, and that doesn't actually change their placing. So we're just taking a drop off the table that way. Alright, and then uh, rain, where blue gets a win. And... All of the thunderclouds rain out. Alright, so this is now developed. One, two oh no wait, sorry, that's a that's a non thunder cloud. What am I doing? Let me let me fix that. It's almost like I don't even know the rules of the game. <laughs> well that didn't work. I think it might be an issue of the red uh, the red drop having been completely sandwiched between blue drops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that is definitely sprouting. Does not develop. Uh, this guy is not developed for a bunch of reasons. Okay, and that is developed. I guess I don't, like, really have to mark this, because obviously it's about to clear, but, you know. Okay. So that is the end of the rain process. Now we do harvest, because the dice actually show harvest. Alright, so one at a time. First, here, we have the requisite stuff. So five points and three honey for red. I'm doing it. I'm getting back in the honey game. Also, I obliterated that honey bag. Such was the force of my of my honey grasping. All right, so now we're tied. I don't know what happens on a tie, and I refuse to find out. Just I simply won't. So all these drops go back in the thing and clear this. Uh, and then, is it just the germinated pollen that comes off, or is it all of the pollen? Uh, let's see, when a harvest occurs. Here we go. Harvest as usual. After a harvest, remove all germinated pollen tokens from any honey producing tiles that were harvested, and then place one dormant pollen token on every tile. Okay. So we'll we'll process that all at once at the end of this. Alright, this tile scores five points for blue and three points for red. Which is not too shabby, considering the amount of uh, effort that Blue spent on that. I think we came out in a pretty good spot there. Uh, and then this tile is 5 points red, 1 point blue. And you know what? I'm, I'm feeling okay about our position here. 5 points red, 1 point blue. Maybe I didn't overcompensate. Maybe I undercompensated. Let's remove these and remove the. I've already forgotten what it said. Is it just the just the germinated pollen from honey-producing tiles that were harvested, and then everything gains dormant? So I'm just gonna flip this over to the dormant side, and you get a dormant. You get one. Okay. We do that right? Including ones that already have dormant or germinated pollen. Okay. Well then. Uh, cleanup step. So first of all, because this did get harvested, new roll. Okay, seven. That's not what I wanted there. There we are. Uh, seven, that's probably high enough that there will not be a, uh, a third harvest. We'll just get the one at the end of the game. And eight new cards for me. 
Okay, we did not pull any frost, which is a little awkward given the cloud situation here. We're gonna have to gonna have to buy our frost the expensive way. All right, let's start the third round. Reshuffle again. All right, what field is getting two things? It's this one. Hey, that looks like it might actually be a problem. So this has entered the developed state. And then also double rain vote. That's... I feel bad about it. That's not good for us. We're not in a great spot here. So right now, this is only four points. But, you know, things are going to get worse. You have reason to believe. All right, we need to figure out what our what our plan is for this last harvest. Do we want to try to harvest the blueberries again? The southern winds could get too honey at any moment. So I'm inclined to think that it would be nice to... And also, you know, five points. Like, it would be good to do that harvest one more time. We could do it by... I mean, it's unfortunate that the bee got moved all the way to the opposite side of the world. Obviously, we could spend a honey to fix it. When the bee goes to a place, you collect all dormant pollens. Alright, I think we're going to do a bee action, and we're just going to move the bee to right here to pick up those, uh, those things. But that, of course, is our second action. Our first action is... Let's, uh, our first action is a frost, so we're going to play two rain as a frost. We're going to get ourselves a light cloud, and we're going to place it over the blueberries, and we're going to put a, put a drop in the cloud. And then we're going to vote... Hmm. Do we want to vote frost? I might want to vote sun instead. Because the question is, how much do we want everything to rain through? Because there's fairly likely to be a rain action this turn. And obviously frost plus rain clears all of the clouds. I'm going to vote sun. I don't think it's beneficial to us for the frost action to happen. It may not be beneficial for us for the sun action to happen either. I don't know. All right, and then we're going to discard a wind to take the bee action. We're going to move the bee to an adjacent tile, this coffee tile, and we're going to collect all of the dormant pollen there. That seems useful. All right, the southern wind's turn. You can't, you just can't, you can't know what they're thinking these wins. Alright, so that's a sun vote. Unfortunate. And <clears throat> place a droplet in cloud two. Hey, there is in fact a cloud two. Uh, and you get to reduce one of the harvest dice in the really valuable way. It's a pretty good turn for them, actually. <laughs> Not something I'm super happy about at all. Hey, when the bee moves... Is it orthogonal adjacency? Uh, let's see. Discard any one card to move the bee to an adjacent tile. I would assume that this is not uh, does not require orthogonal adjacency because of the fact that other rules that do require that do specifically call it out. So I think we can bee action this bee over to here. And we can place some uh, some droplets that way. And this should not... That should not be a thundercloud. Okay, let's, um... We're gonna be action, but what are we gonna do first? We don't really need to sun. That tile is going to be under control from just the drops we're going to place from the B action. So, rain doesn't really do anything. I think what I'm going to do is 
play two wind as frost? Like we just need to we need to put down more clouds and stuff. Pretty sure. Uh so do we wanna there's no way we take over the watermelon, right? Think sun's gonna happen? We could try to force this coffee to develop. I'd have to be able to get four droplets on it, though. I can make that happen. Right? If we do one droplet now, discard rain to move the... No, that's not going to work. It's going to be really hard. Well, it's going to be really hard to get it to develop this round. We don't need it to develop this round, because the harvest isn't this round. I'm not going to stress about it too much. I think this is the right move. And then we're going to vote... Uh, I'm going to vote Sun. I'm not letting you have the win. And then we are, in fact, going to discard Rain to take the B action. Moving the B to over here. Spend one or two pollen to place one drop for each on the B tile and place the pollen. So basically the question is, do I think I want to place... Do I want to spend both my pollen? I think the answer is yes. I think I do not have any particular interest in holding on to these. Let's drop some germinated pollen. That also gets two of my drops on the tile, which is a pretty big deal. Because now this tile is, uh, is growing. I considered just having the bee take the two honey, but I think this is better. We need the points. Yeah. Okay, so that's my action. Now it's on you. Oh, good. More bee stuff. So the bee moves to the highest numbered tile where the southern winds doesn't have control, places two drops, and obliterates the pollen. Right? Is that right? Did I do it? Uh, okay. Move the bee to the highest numbered tile where it is not currently present, where the neutral player does not have the majority of drops. Uh, remove all the dormant pollen. Place two drops. Yep, okay, we did it. And then also vote on the thing that has the fewest votes. And harvest. That gap's closing real fast. And I'm like, this is still a problem. I was feeling pretty good right after the harvest. I am already scared again. It's remarkable how that works. So here's a question. Do we want to... Do we want to take a shortish turn? Or do we want to just pass? I mean, I guess it doesn't really have to be a short turn. It could be sun plus B action. What is... what If I were to do sun plus B action... Because I do like the sun. I like getting getting more uh, discs over top of that uh, that coffee plant. And if we did do the sun, then we could we could vote sun, and we could just trade wins maybe. Unfortunately, we have no idea uh, whether or not there would be any more sun voting from the wind. But I do want to develop this position a little bit more. So if I did the B action, we could spend a honey, which would mean after the harvest we're only at seven instead of eight, but we could spend a honey to take the bee to a position where we could get two more pollen and then have the B action available to, um, have the B action available to, uh, suddenly drop a bunch of water somewhere if we need to. I kind of like that. All right, I think we're going to do it. So sun action gets me two drops in this cloud plus a sun vote. And then B action, spending a honey. We'll see if this turns out to be foolish. I'm going to move you... Does it matter where? I guess I'll move you here just to make it so that the... Uh, the Southern Wind's B action definitely can't put you there under any circumstances, because it always has to move the B. 
All right, and then Southern Winds ah brutally outvotes me. What a card! What a what a draw! And places a droplet in cloud four, which is interesting at least. And then I pass, and a mixed cloud moves northwest. Okay, there are two actual options, so we do have to roll for this. All right, it's this cloud, and it just it just moves west, right? Uh, if the cloud is already in the first column, move it only north. If if it's on P2, move it to P1. Okay. I'm fine with this. Because we already have this uh, this tile growing. So that actually works out okay for us. And then a pair of wind votes. And that ends the action phase. And I'm feeling a little brutalized here. Just a tiny bit. Alright. Uh, weather phase. So... We have this going. This is crummy. So we get a sun action where all of your stuff doubles. And then I get to double in one place. Wait, what am I doing? Sorry. We gotta double you. Then I get to double in one place. Uh, the coffee majority is pretty narrow. I think I'm going to double on the coffee. So that causes a fall through, right? And that's during a sun action. So this gets placed and then flipped over to the develop side at the end of the sun action. So that's, you know, that's alright scoring for us. That's a five point differential. Uh, and then wind. Oh, sorry. And you get a vote win for that. And then wind, for which you also receive a vote win. We're gonna lose, man. We're gonna lose like a lot. Alright, I get to move one disc somewhere and then I have a bunch of my discs migrate northward. I'm gonna move one disc this way, I think, so that we're still in on this. Actually, you know what? It's probably better if I do this and make this cotton not scorable anymore. And then I have a disc migrate north here and a disc migrate north here. We lose two points, but they lose five points that way instead of me preserving my two points. Okay. I am not overjoyed about this. Harvest phase is no harvest. During the cleanup, this happens, and then... Here we go. So, right now, I am poised to lead on honey. I do not currently actually lead on honey. Also, we're down 12 points on votes, and we're likely to lose at least... We're likely to not be able to make up two vote wins. We might be able to do one, but there's two. There's a little bit, little bit too much of a head start, I think, for us to think that there will be two vote wins for us. So, what's probably going to happen is that we're going to end up down 16 points, right? We'll move to 5, and he'll move to 21. Winning the honey gets us back through most of that. But the actual harvest itself is not super great. Like, remember, um, all of the weather that has at least one vote will fire, so this is going to fall through. So this coffee's going to score. The watermelon's going to score. Uh, right now, the rice is not developed because it has to, it has to be sprouting f before the rain. Actually, it probably, it probably will develop here. I bet it has the same timing as this thing. But also, this is kind of an irrelevant number of points at the moment. I suppose it's possible we could use the B to fix the scoring somewhere. To jump into a, a, a better spot. Or, alternatively, we could try to move this cloud. Actually, I really like that idea. Okay, I think I have some idea what our plan's going to be. Let's start the turn. 
All right, so you are removing one of my discs from tile four. That is not a big deal. And also you are voting once for frost. That could have been a lot worse. All right, our turn. I'm gonna play wind, I think. And we're gonna wind this cloud into that cloud. No, oh, I I caused a I caused a ruckus. And then I almost want to discard four cards to just wind this again to get it off of this tile. Because if it gains one more disc, it's gonna rain through and it's gonna be real bad. But I mean, I guess we're at least in on it now. We're we're second place. And then we can be action. Or we could we could rain. I don't think rain's very good. Sun's real bad. I guess frost is fine. Yeah, maybe we frost. I'm gonna frost. So we'll drop two frosts. Did I vote? I didn't vote. Uh, so, voting off of a wind action. Do I want to try to catch up on rain? We probably have to seed frost, which I do not like. We got a challenge somewhere, though, right? Is... Okay, double rain is in here already. Single rain is not. Just trying to calculate the likelihood that if we commit votes to red uh, to rain, we're going to get completely blown out on it. Maybe we'd be better off. I'm gonna I'm gonna just try to push wind up. I think. Okay, and then we're playing frost. So let's put a cloud. Oh, I've broken the cloud. There we go. I think I picked it up by the invisible lightning bolt. Was the problem? Do we want to try to take this over? I don't think I care much about that. We could maybe make the watermelon happen. I'm going to I'm going to try to I'm going to try to take the watermelon. All right. So that's my frost action and then my frost vote is going to be I'm just going to vote right here. We'll try to We'll try to compete on this one while raising wind up, and we'll just hope we'll just hope things go well. You know? That's my entire plan, is let's hope. Alright, so that's a wind vote. Shared cloud goes down into the right. Well, shit. I guess we're not getting this. So, all of these fall through. And then, all of these fall through. And I guess that's uh, I guess that's a big watermelon win. My plan was we could we could um, seed the cloud with frost, sun the cloud, get the bee down here and do the pollen thing, increasing the pollen count on the watermelon while simultaneously catching us up or even putting us ahead. Now that's definitely not going to work because this is eleven drops. So congratulations on your watermelon win. Hopefully we can just make it four points for you, two points for me, and that, that should work out just fine. Uh, and then also, blue votes wind. Yeah, that's ugly, man. That's a real ugly thing that just happened there. But we, we prevented the coffee from scoring. And the, you, know, you know what? This didn't actually change anything. It just prevented something else from changing, and it did prevent blue from scoring the coffee out. So actually... I'm fine with it. I've decided now. All right. Um, this does suck, though. I'm going to frost. I wish we had just drawn more frost. We're going to frost the here. Okay. Is 
If we take a sun action right now, we spend our two rain as a sun, so we have double sun, then this cloud will have three drops in it, frost will turn it into a storm cloud, rain will have it fall through, and then we'll score five to three on that. We can't, I don't think we can turn it on. Because the uh, the sun action won't won't put enough uh, drops on it, the cloud the cloud will only get to six. But so we we would put our vote here, and maybe actually win a vote, which we it would be nice if we could do that. I think that's what we do instead of taking any B actions. So I am going to play two suns for my second action here. Uh, we are going to add two discs to there, and we are going to vote wind. And then you get to play uh, honey. That's devastating. I mean, it's yeah, it's devastating. So the bee moves to here. Oh, that's really bad, actually. Yeah, I think we lost. I think we might have lost by a lot, actually. Honey action was pretty devastating, because that's that's we just lost ten points. It's gonna be a tie on honey, which I'm you know what, it doesn't matter. Either neither of us get the points or both of us get the points, and those are the same thing. Uh so that's your action, then I pass, then you get one more action. You vote rain, which is fine. As far as scoring goes, I don't think that hurts us. Um, you also put a droplet onto tile 5, which doesn't, fortunately, doesn't matter, because you were already, that was already scoring. Okay, and then vote rain, and uh, harvest is a point. And that is the last action of the game. So now we move into the harvest phase where I harvest... Or sorry, we move into the weather phase. Uh, I get to pick which of the things uh, resolve for points. Obviously, I pick this one and then one of the others. So let's just update the voting wins now. And then because it is the final turn, we do process everything that had at least one vote. So first of all, frost weather. All clouds are storm clouds. Then... Wind, which lets me move one disc somewhere of my choosing. I don't think it can possibly matter because of the fact that um, that after the after this move, all one of my discs is going to blow upward. We can't even get the one point on here. We're already scoring this out. I suppose I can get one point, like, I can do this. That that gives me a point, I think. Yeah, because that'll... That puts this into sprouting, and then it is going to rain. Okay. And then uh, a disc from here moves up, a disc from here moves up. That doesn't really... That doesn't change anything about our scoring. Then... Uh, the rain happens. This rains through, which is real good for us, because that makes this the case. Uh, let me move this bee out of the way. And then it's harvest time. So, harvest time. Uh, oh, also the rain flipped this. One! You did it, Red. One point. Then five points plus three honey. We were so close. We were so close to winning on honey. So it's seven versus seven. Uh, and then uh, this is five points red, three points blue. This is ten points red, five points blue. This is five points blue alone. And this is four blue, two red. Uh, and then... Honey doesn't score anything. 
uh, votes. This takes you to 51, and I go to... I go to 45. And that's it, right? I'm not forgetting anything. I feel like there's one more endgame something. I don't know what it would be. These pollen aren't worth anything. Yep, I, I believe that is the final score. I believe the final score is 45-51. The honey, man. The honey broke me. Out of curiosity, how is how is honey scoring? How does honey scoring actually work? Uh, if two or more players are tied for position on a tile, they and everyone below them score a lower rank. Yeah, that's not a big surprise. So, we both score zero points on Honey. Oof. That's rough. If it if it had just if we had just not drawn that, I guess we were pretty close to the bottom of the deck. The odds on that getting drawn were were pretty good. The reshuffle is yeah, the reshuffle is next. Well, hey, it was close. It was it was close. That's definitely like a more compelling experience having to actually like try to figure things out than, than the blowout that we got in the last game. So I think that the honeybee adds some interesting, uh, some interesting decision making, and again, I think this would be way more compelling with more players. The the honeybee movement in general. There's also a whole bunch of um, I, sh I should note. There's a whole bunch of fields that you can't play with in the solo mode because they don't make sense. Um, so there's there's a lot of, there's a lot more game here when you have some friends. If only SB had any friends at all. But hey, listen. Don't cry for me. I'm, I'm playing board games all day. So that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, later today, uh, we'll be putting the bee back in his drawer. Because uh, I don't think you can play the two expansions together solo. I, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. But what we will definitely have is some... You know, I was going to say some adorable cows, but actually zooming in. Hold on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the overlay back down actually zooming in on this cow there is something menacing about it right like right in right in this area yeah yeah i don't like it that cow looks like it knows something i don't all right we'll come back next time a little bit later today for what may well be a deeply terrifying experience and we'll see you then